Let's review the entire thing. Here we are. Remember, the cell that goes through meiosis starts an interface. Sometimes between meiosis 1 and 2, <coughs> there'll be another interphase. But we always start out in at least one interphase in the beginning. In G1, we have not replicated our DNA. If we were to look at our chromosomes, remember, they don't have sisters yet because they didn't go through S. But you can see in this case, I've got three pairs of homologs. So we're going to get to keep track of three different homologs and how they're lining up. If we go through S, we're going to duplicate our DNA. Now we have sisters. Still, we have two, three pairs of homologs. How many total chromosomes here? We've got six, and we could count our centromeres, which would be right where my little arrow is, her. All right. Prophase one. What's going to happen in prophase one? Everything you would expect from prophase of mitosis, our chromosomes condense, the nuclear envelope dissolves, the nucleolus disappears, the centrioles appear, the centrosomes start to form, but what's happening right now? Homologs hook up. That's the unique event in meiosis that does not happen in mitosis. My homologs have hooked up. Crossing over occurs. You can see that not every part of the chromosome crosses over. It's random about what part crosses over and what part doesn't. And that's awesome. We just swapped bits. Metaphase, we're going to get our, our microtubules to attach, our spindle fibers to attach to the centromeres of our chromosomes. And our homologs are going to line up on the metaphase plate. Look at independent assortment. We could line up with all the greens on one side, but we didn't. This guy ruined the pattern. We could line up in a different pattern, and we didn't. There's actually eight different ways that these three chromosomes can line up and end up with a different outcome. Anaphase one, homologs split. The homologs, oops, I meant like that. Homologs split, and then cytokinesis is going to take place. Telophase is going to take place. Now we have two cells. Sometimes we unravel, sometimes we don't, but those two cells are going to head into prophase two. Now, metaphase two, we're going to line up our sisters on the metaphase plate. Our spindle fibers are going to do the job. The centrioles are going to pull the sisters apart, and that's anaphase two that we're pulling our sisters apart pulling them to the poles. Let's go ahead. We've got telophase going on. Let's do a little bit of cyto oopsie, cytokinesis. There we go. And now we end up with four unique haploid daughter cells from one original diploid parent cell. <coughs> that's the process of meiosis. And that's it. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that cool? The next thing we're going to do, where we're headed next, is we're going to look at, okay, we just made gametes. We made sperm and eggs. Let's see what kind of babies we can end up with. What? We're going to look at pea babies in the next lecture. I might just have to do that right now because it's fun. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.